Hey, you doing? Man, I love pineapple juice. It's got a lot of sugar in it, though. I'm not supposed to drink that stuff. Oh, well, got to die of something, right? Pineapple juice. <laughs> you know, sometimes I love getting crazy emails. One of the wonderful things about wisdom is that uh, people think you only get inspired by highly intelligent things that are says, wow, I never thought about that before. That's fascinating. You know, that sends my mind off in a different direction of intellectual inquiry. <laughs> um, wisdom is kind of like a so-called superconductor, which is basically near zero magnetic permeability. When magnetism comes along, it kind of bounces off of it like a bulletproof vest. Um, when people send me stupid stuff, and I've read every book and been through every book and article that ever existed on magnetism. There might be some obscure stuff out there, but basically there's about 30 different things that are said and everybody else copies it or rewords it and I can confirm to you that's the case. Anyway, I got uh, sent a link to a uh, English website. It's the official site for, uh, I forget which university, uh, but I've read this article before. And uh, so you, some guy from England sent this to me. So, of course, he used an English website. Hello, governor. You didn't discover magnetism. <laughs> what it is, it's, it's, it's right here, mate. What it is. And uh, I, I like it when people do that. I haven't looked at this particular article in a really long time. And I like to examine it. And we all must fundamentally start out with a premise that nature has to be rational, logical, sensible, and extremely simple. It can't be any other way. I mean, it violates Occam's razor. It violates the fundamental precept and foundation of natura naturans. That would be the foundation of nature. So these people, of course, are a circle of peer review. This article is written by a PhD, and it was peer-reviewed. And peer review is one dog sniffing another dog's uh, dirty behind, and that dog sniffing another dog's behind, and it kind of goes around in a circle. They each affirm that each one of their dirty little uh, donut holes, <laughs> you know, smells the same. They can agree that they all smell bad, and that's basically what a peer review is. So You have a lot of people actually agreeing on this, and they have for a long time. There's don't want to upset the apple cart and have an original thought. It's like, you know, this doesn't uh, pass the smell test. So i like to read this to you and uh, see what you think. And uh, see if it, some of you out there have been reading the Pitophysian and some other intelligent works can actually dissect this along with me. It says that magnetism is the region in space that has penetrated... I gotta talk in my PhD voice, let me roll it back. Uh, magnetism is the region in space that is penetrated by imaginary lines of magnetic force, described as a magnetic field. Mm. <laughs> Let's take a look at this once again. Now this, actually, if you type in imaginary lines uh, of magnetic force, do a parenthesis around it, in other words, it has to be an exact search, you'll come up with you know, like a hundred different websites that are all repeating this garbage. You didn't discover what magnetism is. It says right here what it is. A bunch of PhDs peer review their conclusions is the nature of magnetism, which is this. So magnetism is a region of space that is penetrated by imaginary lines of magnetic force. Well, force is not a thing. Force of what, by what, and upon what, we must ask. And what would it be due to? Why is there force at all, rather than no force? Why is there any force at all? Lines? Now, of course, people see lines as the same thing you see underneath the supercell. These are constructive and destructive lines of interference. Same thing actually witnessed in the dual slit experiment. And this is, of course, the fight, if you will, between the magnetic and the dielectric. Of course, the light is a compound energy circuit, transverse electromagnetic, longitudinal rarefaction and compression. Makes up a compound energy circuit. And when they actually have spatial temporal a divergence, when they re-interfere, there is constructive and destructive interference. So this is where they actually get the lines from, all branches of science. But they actually talk about lines. But I'll give them credit where they actually say uh, they're imaginary lines. Well, 
they're actually trying to define the magnetic field, and they're telling you that that's what this is. And, but the magnetic field is a region of space that is penetrated by imaginary lines. That is quantitatively and qualitatively no different than saying that uh, magnetism is a region of space penetrated by leprechauns and unicorns. Because leprechauns and unicorns, last I checked, were these imaginary entities. So can we just replace imaginary lines with unicorns or leprechauns? You take your pick. Me being slightly part Irish, I would choose the leprechaun. So region of space, magnetism, region of space penetrated by leprechauns. Okay, magnetic force, but force once again of what, by what, and upon what. And this describes the magnetic field. Well, these people have never thought about this subject, and there's no branch of science that's ever defined a field. Of course, a field, as I've said many, millions of times, is an ether perturbation modality, kind of like ice, water, and steam, or different temperature pressure modalities of water. There's actually two different states of water. There's a plasma state of water, and there's this quasi-state of water. It's kind of obtuse. You can kind of argue it's one or the other, so there's no reason to discuss that. But there are different temperature pressure modalities of water. I mean, that's what a field is, an ether perturbation modality. Ether, of course, has no substance, it's not a fluid, it's not a liquid. It's not in Cartesian pure potential, the original definition of the term inertia. So that's what a field is. We could actually have a field modality of water floating in the ocean, and that, of course, is what the Titanic hit. Hey, we, got a water, we have a water field in the uh, starboard. Uh, well, I forget which direction that the Titanic turned. They saw a water, a water field in the North Atlantic, which is what we call ice, right? This would be low temperature water, otherwise known as ice. All these field modalities are really simple. Once again, Mother Nature really is a hairy arm pit chick with muddy feet and a hemp skirt. And she doesn't do calculus. She doesn't do algorithms. All she does is convergence, divergence, and simplex pressure mediation. And that makes nature really, really simple. So. I've had many people over the years actually send me the same article. Once again, it's found on a hundred different websites, but they've never read it, and they've never, never actually turned their brain on when they send me a link. Say, you yeah, didn't discover what magnetism is. It's right here. There's a bunch of PhDs wrote this. Well, that is true, but there's nothing in here that's either rational, sensible, simplex, logical, and it certainly never defines magnetism. And of course. A force of what? They've already said that it's imaginary lines, which is quantitatively and qualitatively, once again, no different than a unicorn or a leprechaun. The things that actually don't exist in these sentence, uh, this sentence, and there's another one right after it, is lines. A yeah, line is not a thing. That's the conceptual abstraction employed by humans to refer to what is seen. This is in the dual slit experiment, constructive and destructive interference. Force. Force is not a thing, no different than waves. Waves! I love it when sci scientists love the word waves, lines, force, and quantum. These are four of the nine primary things that don't exist. Waves, lines, force, and quantum. Lines of what? That's a concept. There's, they've already said that they're imaginary, and that's the one thing that they did get right. These lines are just constructive and destructive interference, uh, epiphenomena, technically between the magnetic and the dielectric. And of course, magnetism is a dielectric field, just as ice is the field of water when it gets cold. They're not two different things. They're an inseparable whole, or as the Greeks would call it, a holos, yeah, a unity. Specifically, it's the conjugate nature of the entire universe. So things that don't exist in the sense, lines, force, imaginary, which of course, you know, that obviously is undeniably, it doesn't exist. It's a region. The region is an XYZ Cartesian coordinate relative. You actually have to have seven points, point of origin, and map out uh, a region of what? Region of space. Well, space, don't quote me, I mean, I'm quoting Nikola Tesla here, doesn't have any properties. It has attributes, but space is no different than a shadow. A shadow is not a thing. Shadow doesn't exist. It's a privation of light. However, human beings, of course, have an ideation of the word shadow which is, of course, a noun in the dictionary, just as region is a noun in the dictionary. But a region relative to what? A region is not a thing that acts upon things. Neither do lines and, I'll say, well, force acts upon things, but force of what, by what, upon what, and why is there any force at all? 
these lines don't exist. You know, I'm getting in the minutia of the lexicon used, but these people are trying to hogwash, brainwash, you know, flim-flam the entire world. That the because I have people that send me links to this same article. You didn't discover magnetism. Well, yeah, I did. They'll either say this, they'll send me this, or they'll send me, say, well, Nikola Tesla discovered that, or Walter Russell, or Emanuel Swedenborg, or Victor Schauberger. And I said, why don't you go quote me, or any of these entities? Swedenborg, Tesla, Schauberger, Charles Proudy Steinmetz, Oliver Heaviside, Faraday, um, James Kirk Maxwell. Were any of them to find magnetism? And the answer is that none of them do. You can't find where any of these people say, this is what magnetism is. You can't. It, it doesn't exist for many of them. So. These people have never thought about this subject at all. Now, right after this, just one sentence down, it says, unlike the old pervasive fundamental force field of gravity, well, gravity is the total opposite of a force. Once again, we have to talk about force of what, by what, and upon what. There is no force implied either in periphery or directly when we're talking about, well, I'm going to release this rock. You know, what is this phenomena? What is that phenomenon? There's no force involved in this phenomena. Pretty sure that's an acceleration. But an acceleration due to what? It's no different than electrostatic attraction. Same thing that, unfortunately, human beings call magnetic attraction. Isn't it fascinating? I find this extremely fascinating. I can't actually reach people mentally on this. At least most people I can't. Ever since the dawn of time when humans knew of lodestones, which is naturally occurring magnets, which is a qualitative object, not a quantitative object, because everything is magnetic as so far as a matter goes on an atomic scale, what defines a magnet is qualitative. It's a point source phenomena. All matter is either ferromagnetic, paramagnetic, diamagnetic. They say, well, these are two magnets. Well, that's not in denial. And you see where the logic fails here. This is something I've actually pointed out, and it's really key nuance. You can, and there are YouTubers that do this. There's a guy that repairs MacBooks, and he'll tell you the truth, but uh, all the facts are accurate, but the story is a lie. And this is the same thing with so-called magnetic attraction, which doesn't exist at all. I'm going to tell you the very short story about this guy. He's a little short guy, and he accurately is extremely good at, at fixing MacBooks. You know, he'll take like a, a three-cent resistor that's the size of, you know, uh, uh, a mosquito crotch. He's very, very, very tiny. He has to put it underneath the microscope to desolder it, and he has very good skills at it. And I know how to solder. But you have to have really good skills for that, and you have to stick it underneath a microscope. Subcomponent repair. All of that is, I say, well, Apple folks said that uh, it would cost two thousand dollars to replace the whole uh, main board of the computer. This is all true. I fixed it. It was a thirty-three cent part. Now my labor is worth a lot because I'm extremely skilled, and he is. And so he'll desolder this tiny little resistor, for example. It's very, very, very tiny. It was a 33 cent part. Now my labor's worth 100 bucks. That's all fine. All this is true. All these facts are true. You see, Apple's a bunch of lying filth mongers. <clears throat> Said I fixed it and Apple refused to do it. They wanted to replace the whole motherboard. See, all of his facts are accurate, but what he's missing is that the zit faced teenagers that get like two weeks of training that uh, work in the back room of an Apple store or any laptop repair place, actually. They all do this, not just Apple. They do main part diagnostics, like what is the main component that failed? Boom. It takes them like 30 minutes using a special diagnostics tool to figure that, well, the main board's failed. Even though it might be only a tiny resistor there. They don't do subcomponent repair because that requires an enormous amount of training, which Apple or IBM or HP, they're not willing to, you know, have a zit-faced guy get that kind of training because time is money. And so what they do is identify the major component and replace it. So this is an example of where all the facts are true, and yet all these people have fallen for this because they see, all, well, that fact's true, that fact's true, that fact's true. That is true, but the entire story itself is a lie. So it's accurate to say, well, we have two magnets here, in the case of lodestones, because these existed naturally. Yeah, 
the Greeks found them, the Egyptians, and the Chinese used them for navigation. Lodestones, look at that. These are two magnets. Yep, yeah, right so far. They're accelerating towards one another. You know, they're jumping. So I got two magnets that are jumping towards one another. It's kind of like attraction. Well, like a, a guy loves a girl and they get together and kiss or whatever they do. <laughs> so this is therefore magnetic attraction. So the facts are correct. Two magnets, fact. They're accelerating towards one another, or you could say attracting. Fact. Therefore, this is magnetic attraction. False. Correct facts, incorrect story, or synopsis, or conclusion. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Because they're accelerating towards one another, it's not magnetism, that's dielectric acceleration. What defines a magnet is that it's a, a point source object, and a magnet is a qualitative object, and it has point source incommensurability, where the entire magnetic field is your magnetic precession. Yeah, just like a gyroscope. You've seen a gyroscope process, right? Same thing is true, except infinitely faster in the magnetic field. Imagine, of course, the donut, i.e. a torus, the geometry of the magnetic field. We actually have precession. Yeah? Geomagnetic precession. It's called the Lamore frequency. You just think of a gyroscope processing. Everybody's seen a gyroscope spin up and it starts to process and as it slows down, it processes even more. Well, this actually happens on the atomic scale. When all of these atoms are working in unison, you have uh, an object that is qualitative rather than merely quantitative. All the magnetism is the same except everything is operating in unison and then the magnetic field because it, it is multiplicative rather than additive extends outside of the object. And this is the only thing that fascinates people about magnets. But look, I got two magnets are attracting or accelerating towards one another. This therefore is magnetic attraction. All of your facts are right but your conclusion is wrong. And that is not magnetic attraction, it's dielectric acceleration. Gravity, so-called magnetic attraction, which is not magnetism based at all. And electrostatic cling, when you pull socks out of the dryer and they stick apart and you rip them apart, you could hear that electrostatic ripping. Yeah. That is the opposite of force. Force is the dissipation of energy. You put your foot on the gas pedal, you're burning a little bit of gas. It's causing force to drive you down the road. Okay. That's force. What would be inertia? When you fill your gas tank up and you turn your car off, that would be inertia. Acceleration, inertia, is the opposite of force. It's an acceleration. Or rest, in the case of the car analogy. Anyway, getting back to this passage here, it says, unlike the... Oh, this helps you think, too. And like that YouTuber guy, this is where uh, weaker minds are fooled. They'll listen to all those facts. Fact, 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 fact. And then he'll take all those facts and say, well, this is the story. It's like, no, you got your facts right, but your story is incorrect. Same is true here. Unlike the all-pervasive fundamental field, force field of gravity, which is not a force at all, the magnetic force, and magnetism is force, actually, magnetic force field within a magnetized body, such as a bar magnet, is polarized. Now, see, these people, just like the word field, can't actually define the word polarized. What does polarization mean? Well, a magnet has poles. We've we got the North Pole, and I mean we got the South Pole. It's polarized, kind of like a stick. we got the head end of the stick and the tail end of the stick. It's polarized. It's kind of divided in its field, like right down the middle there. You can see that underneath the magnetic field viewer. Well, so far we're right. We have uh, accurate facts stated. But what is the polarization? Because there's no North Pole here and no South Pole over here, or vice versa. Because if you cut it in half, each half will have its own midpoint. Therefore, there's nothing located there. It has no Cartesian value. It must necessitatively be field pressure relative to the demonstrable object. So when you cut the demonstrable object, each new half has a demonstrable uh, force or field pressure mediation where the new midpoint shifts from the middle of the singular object to the midpoint of each additional object. So then we have to actually define field incommensurability, which of course takes a little bit of time. So they say polarized, so they don't define polarized, they don't define the term field. That is, the field is strongest at the opposite ends and at the two extremes or poles of the magnet. The magnet doesn't have poles, it has the inverse of counter space. Inertia and dielectricity is really the accelerative vector towards counter space. Of the thousand plus videos of the supercell that I've posted, you see that big black spot on either end? That's the opposite of magnetism. Each and every magnet on either side 
as a dielectric portal, if you will. Everybody says it kind of looks like a black hole, not that people really know what a black hole looks like. That black spot there where no light is seen, well, that's the complete absence of magnetism. That's construct of dielectric acceleration. Everywhere you actually see lines around the periphery of the magnet, that is actually magnetism. Right here you see the absence of light, we have the dielectric. We have uh, uh, multiplicative, additive, additive, I said additive, additive dielectricity. Everywhere we see light, we have multiplicative, additive magnetism. The fight between the two, because magnetism is the dielectric field, just like saying ice is the field of water when it is cold. These are not two different things. Captain, ice on the horizon, Turner, you know, turn the Titanic, and of course, it still struck the, the iceberg, right? There's no sailor that's afraid of water, unless, of course, there's a big storm, and then, of course, you have waves, waves of what? Water, right? Waves! Epiphenomena. Kind of a really accurate analogy on the stormy sea, or up in the cold Atlantic, where the Titanic hit the iceberg. We have epiphenomena of waves, which is a water modality, right? And then we have another water modality, ice. It's all water, isn't it? The sailors aren't afraid of the calm waters. The sailors, however, are afraid of the gigantic tidal waves that like sweep the, sweep the ship on its side and turn it upside down, like that wonderful movie. What was it called? The Poseidon Adventure. It's just super killer uh, due to a, a hurricane. Super killer wave comes and turns the whole boat upside down. Everybody has to survive to make their way to the bottom, which is now the top. Nobody's afraid of the calm waters. The sailors aren't. They're afraid of the waves, epiphenomena. They're afraid of the ice, field phenomena of water. These people have never defined polarity. They can't tell you what a magnet is. They can't tell you what magnetism is. They've never defined the term field. They have everything upside down. They keep calling gravity force. Force of gravity. Gravity is not only not a force, it's the total opposite of force. And there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Sure there is. Two magnets are accelerating towards one another. And therefore, it is magnetic attraction. You have your facts correct, but your story wrong. Two magnets are accelerating towards one another. Correct facts. These, are these both magnets? Yes, they are. Mr. Fat Tattooed Man? Yes, they are. They're both magnets. Are they not accelerating or attracting towards one another? Yes, they are. Therefore, it is magnetic attraction. Eh. Failure. So you have to have a sharp mind. This is the reason for retroductive synthetic synthesis, excuse me, retroductive synthesis of thought, where you can examine the facts logically rationally and sensibly. It's like, well, I see where your train of logic dumped you down that dark alley there. But your conclusion and your whole synopsis of what's going on is incorrect. You got all your facts right, but your conclusion is wrong. It's kind of like uh, two detectives that can look at all the facts of, uh, you know, where they drew the chalk outline and all the little tidbits and forensic data. They can look at all the facts, yet draw a completely different. The wife did it. No, 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 it wasn't the wife. It was the butler. They're both detectives, they're both looking at the exact same facts, and yet they draw totally different conclusions or paint a completely different story. This is something that's not taught in school or college. This retroductive analysis with both Aristotelian, Platonic, and Pythagorean is incredibly important in the means by which anybody could come to the correct, correct conclusions of things. An object is not dominated by magnetism, but it is the puppet show that everybody sees. Everybody sees the little hand puppet, right? You know, the children are fascinated by the little puppet, but they can't see the hand underneath the puppet, and they can't see the person that's attached to the hand that's controlling the whole thing. Everybody's fascinated by magnetism, but they never make representation of the dielectricity of which magnetism is a modality thereof. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. And this article that everybody keeps sending me a link to, you didn't discover what magnetism is. Here it is right here. These PhDs wrote this article. A region of space is penetrated by imaginary lines, leprechauns, of magnetic force, describes a magnetic field. These people never describe field. These things don't exist. Lines, force, imaginary. Of course, imaginary doesn't exist. By the very word, it doesn't exist. A region. A region is a Cartesian coordinate. It's not a thing. There's this area on the other side of town, and it's influencing thing. An, er an area. An area of what? Like angry people? No, it's just, it's just this region on the other side of town. It's, uh, it's dangerous. 
why well, like a bunch of dangerous people live around this area of town or something no 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 it's just the region itself is dangerous well that doesn't make any sense well i have a phd and you don't and my article is <coughs> peer reviewed <laughs> <laughs> this is what people are taught to believe in in college and high school. So I ask you once again, do you think that this is the correct definition of magnetism that gets repeated hundreds of times all over the internet? Magnetism is the region of space. What? Region? Space? What? Space has no properties, quote unquote Nikola Tesla. It is penetrated by imaginary lines. What? 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 Crazy! A magnetic force describes therein the magnetic field. Descriptions are not explanations, but this doesn't even pass as a description. We're looking at force and imaginary lines. This is what the magnetic field is. And I have a PhD and you don't. You just a fat, bold, tattooed pee on you are. Hmm. Go get your graduate degree and then get back to me in 12 years. You see what this is? What if somebody really wanted to know the answers of things, to things, such as this? I always did, and I knew these people were fools. No one ever goes looking for the answers to things that they already think they know the answer to. And these people, just like the dogs sniffing each other's little dirty donuts, all in a circle. You know how dogs like to sniff each other's dirty donuts? These people have never gone looking for the things that they all mutually agree. They already know the answer, do. Because everybody sends me links to stuff like this. Ah, oh, you didn't know figure out magnetism. These people did. It's peer-reviewed and they have PhDs. Where's your PhD and where's your peer review? <laughs> Crazy! <clears throat> Cuckoo! Cuckoo! <laughs> this is what passes as intellectualism. Not only did you not explain anything, the description itself is completely shoddy. Actually, it's 100% shoddy. This, folks, is what passes for science. This is what Nikola Tesla meant when he said people could think deeply but not clearly. He said you could be quite insane and be a deep thinker but not be able to think clearly. Oh, Tesla was right. And it's gotten only worse since he passed away. He said that basically 100 years ago. How much worse do you think it's gotten since he quoted that, made that uh, statement? A lot. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely weekend. Nailed it.